trigger happy and I give less than a fuck. Love me or hate me, I'ma show no rip shit up. It's Mr. Nothing, nice on a mic stand. Mike in the left and the zest in my right hand. I took a puff, had enough now, hold up. If that was in dope, niggas getting rolled up. Yeah. What's good, folks? I'm Acid Roots, and I'm gonna review T Pain's Freak Nick the musical soundtrack. Now, this was basically on the Adult Swim television channel, and it came out as like a animated musical and that type of stuff. It was, seemed like it was pretty slick. I wonder more about it. Haven't really seen it, but I, I realized that T-Pain had kind of like an interim project. I mean, he really, after like his crest years, which was between like 2005 and early 2009 when he dropped Three Rings, he kind of kind of was almost cast out of the spotlight between songs like Jay-Z's Death of Auto-Tune and things like that that kind of damaged T-Pain a little bit. But he did bounce back in 2011 with Prevolver, the mixtape, and then later that year's Revolver, the album. But 2010 was kind of an awkward year for T-Pain just because I think folks were adjusting to kind of the difference between like the auto-tune kind of hooks that T-Pain gave people throughout the late 2000s. And 2010 was just kind of a spare year for him for T-Pain. So it's just kind of it's interesting to see what he was up to just because I don't remember a lot of songs by T-Pain on the radio in like late 2009 and 2010 and like the first half of 2011. So this is something I wanted to check out just to see how good it was and what to think of it is because I kind of wondered, well, you know, after T-Pain had such a mammoth kind of 2008, 2007 and first half of 2009 it just kind of make me question what happened to the guy and what was kind of going on but this is a decent ep i definitely think it's beneficial and i'm glad that this was something as a bonus package to the freak nick the musical project but i do i almost find myself wishing that there would have been a couple more songs there's at least one song that he did with rick ross called grab yo belt loop that wasn't on here i would have liked to have known that just because t-pain and rick ross are a good combination a good amount of times there is a rick Ross song on here with T-Pain, but it's not really that good. But this is a very brief five song package, and the single is Ghetto Commandments, which has Snoop Dogg and Mac Main on there. So I think this is one of the first times that T-Pain worked with Snoop Dogg. I definitely, I mean, I know Snoop Dogg did a very similar song to the T the T-Pain archetype with sex sexual eruption. But I don't know if T-Pain and Snoop Dogg really... I, they did do a song. They did do a song, but it wasn't until 2011 when they did Boom for Dogumentary. But this was a song that they paired up with a little bit before that. It's decent, but I really feel like the hook is really not that great. I mean, typically T-Pain is always someone who can get like a true pro hook out of some of these even when it's on a rap song it doesn't just have to be an r&b song but when it's on a rap song it also usually turns out pretty stellar but this is an example where it just felt like too chant like and this was not one of t-pain's better hooks and really i felt like the song was just more threatening than it needed to be i know like the ghetto commandments is kind of similar to like the 10 crack commandments by notorious big but I kind of feel like the concept behind it was just more threatening than it needed to be. It just seemed like it was more kind of like a ride out, ready to like, like fuck somebody up kind of night more so than having more relaxed. Kind of, it, it just was not a very relaxed song and it just felt kind of more like you're ready to ride tonight type thing. I mean, Tupac has been known to make those kind of songs and Snoop Dogg has made those kind of songs. It was just surprising the kind of unabashed energy that kind of goes along with that where the first two songs on here freak nick is back and then save you kind of have a more you know differential kind of pace towards it but it just felt like this one was kind of like a black tea kind of wearing like i'm ready to fuck something up kind of vibe and it's, and it's a good party song i mean i'll give it credit like the production on here just had like a real kind of nighttime party in the streets kind of vibe where it's not at a house necessarily it kind of gave me like a street type party it's just too bad the lyrics were so more kind of threatening and kind of more like in your face in a lot of ways is this surprising because that's not t typically t-pain's mo so it's interesting to kind of get that but i do like the song but i wish it, they would have mentioned like a little bit more just getting crunk a little bit having like a cigarette and a beer and you know a bowl or something you know a bowl of weed something like that just something a little bit more relaxed it's, it's not really a twerking song or something for the ladies either so it's just kind of like i said more of like a ride out song that's kind of the concept of the first single so it's basically 
kind of similar to All We Do Is Win by T-Pain, where that was a good song by DJ Khaled, but that wasn't T-Pain's hooks in 2010. He just was not as dominant as he was in like 2008 and 2009. So it just was kind of, it's just an awkward one. I can see how this song wouldn't have charted that high. It is a good song, and I do rec, it's one of the ones I'm going to recommend later. But I really feel like if you notice this song for T-Pain, it's just not one of his best songs. So that's just kind of the situation. He does rap on the song. He doesn't really sing through the song. He kind of lays a rap verse also, but he's kind of being a little bit more rowdy on that song too. So it's just kind of, it's just, you just have to understand that the energy is just more kind of in a, rowdier violent sense than a typical of t-pain's kind of nature so it's just kind of but it is a good song i do like the production on here like i said it feels like a party in the street kind of vibe if you can relay the fact that the lyrics are not about partying so well, that's about it for promotion there's only five songs on here but two of the other songs i enjoyed i did like a typical kind of r&b flavored t-pain's t-pain song and save you it seems like he's trying to give strippers an easier time and not make it where they have such a tough life and that type stuff which is good i kind of like the concept behind that i also realize that there's another cat on here called one chance or i think it's actually a group but this kind of i wish that they would have dropped an album i looked them up a little bit they never got a chance to drop an album they were kind of affiliated with t-pain but they do a good job also it's too bad about them not being able to put out a project really and um, this is like typical of like T-Pain around that time. So it was kind of interesting to get like a bonus cut of T-Pain more in like his element, being able to do an auto-tune kind of R&B flavored song just with a mellow kind of track for the ladies, just about relaxing, taking your shoes off a bit and kicking back and letting, you know, you know, the dude in the situation handle this, this stuff. So it's kind of interesting to kind of get that. And uh, Freak Nick is Back is another hit. I really felt like this is a great intro song, great party song, great just get cranked, great kind of just get, great get, great just kind of get cranked kind of song. I was surprised at how well T-Pain delivered the lyrics on here, especially being a rapper. He doesn't use auto-tune that much. He just raps through this, delivers a pretty high octane hook. And this really is one of those songs that makes you want to have like a house party and that type stuff and just go crazy and, you know, have like a good weekend. I mean, it's a short song, but it's just a high energy kind of song that gets you excited. So I give T-Pain credit for that. But then the other two songs on here, We the Mob and Beat Build. I mean, I didn't like We the Mob just because it didn't even have T-Pain on here apart from the hook. And I kind of feel like uh, it just lacked a lot of the energy compared to some of the ones i mean i wonder why t-pain didn't i mean the beat was okay but not as good as freak nick is back or ghetto commandments and i would have liked for a little bit more t-pain on here i mean i really feel like he should have dropped another r&b song just to kind of do that i mean that could have probably been a single if he would have made like some this like just wondering about what Freak Nick is really about, I don't really know, but just to kind of say he probably could have had something just being at like a sports bar or something like that, just to see what T-Pain was up to in early 2010, it would have been interesting. I mean, he had plenty of room to be able to add something typed to that, but it just felt like he was kind of more in like a rowdier kind of turned up mood with Ghetto Commandments, We the Mob and that type stuff. But Beat Bill is another one. I feel like this was kind of a waste of like a Rick Ross verse and a good combination where I just didn't really enjoy the beat on there. This is probably the worst beat of the whole project. And it just felt kind of awkward because it didn't really feel like a T-Pain song. It didn't make really too much sense for that. The energy was just kind of off and didn't really synchronize. So it was this kind of... I mean, it had like a pacing kind of beat. It really felt like a, a high mid-tempo kind of one, but I just couldn't understand what the point of a song called Beat Build really was. It just didn't really have a topic that really seemed palatable in a lot of ways. So it's just kind of, that's the project. I'm going to give this album or this EP as a score, basically a six and a half out of 10, because the first three songs you hear are really great T-Pain, but the problem with it is, is it just does not show T-Pain's strengths the way that it needs to. Like, I feel like, Really, this project probably would have seen a lot more light if it would have had a better single to kind of anchor this project and get T-Pain back where he needed to be after the diss songs and the people starting to say they hated auto-tune and like the Jay-Z death of auto-tune type stuff and people were moving past it. But this was not a good example of T-Pain being able to get his ground back and his territory back. I do feel like Save You was a good song, but 
there i think this probably project needed to be about one or two songs longer and have another single like back in his old days like buy you a drink and can't believe it with Lil Wayne. I just feel like that would have been a real good instance to get some of those moments because T-Pain just has too diverse songwriting catalog and too many strengths to not be able to nail this and have something, especially a five song EP to say that I'm giving it a six when he has as many hits as he has. I shouldn't be saying that. I mean, it should be rather simple to have five hit songs, but he just doesn't really go with R&B for this. And he doesn't really go with good beats to kind of showcase. And really he doesn't drop too many good hooks either. So I really only prefer two out of the five songs with the hooks for T-Pain, which considering how good T-Pain is at doing hooks, that's really a colossal disappointment. But Freak Nick is Back is, to me, probably the best song on here. Just the energy of how well, it just felt effortless how well T-Pain did that song. It's an easy kind of get crank kind of song. And then Vintage T-Pain is in the song Save You. Just had a good message and good elements of just a great R&B song. But And I did like Ghetto Commandments, but it just really did not have a good T-Pain hook. And that's just kind of the concept about it. But I did appreciate all the rap verses in the production. But that's just kind of the concept. So 6.5 out of 10. The social score I will give a 4 out of 10 just because the single's okay. But I don't know how much expression I would really... I, I don't feel like the single is quite good enough to where people who don't already know about T-Pain and like him would really be completely convinced by the showing in terms of promotion for this project. I do feel like Freak Nick is Back is a great one to kind of introduce, and it's a great party starter, but it's, only, it's less than two and a half minutes, and it's just over too quickly. So that's just kind of the concept. There's just not enough to really get any new convincers over this, but I do feel like it's decent, but it's too short and doesn't have enough of T-Pain's strengths. That's the main straight and narrow about it. But yeah, in terms of the future, T-Pain really hasn't been around recently. He dropped an album called One Up back in 2019. He's been working on something. He dropped a couple mixtapes. But I'm going to have to see some more stuff about him. But this is a decent project. So just understand that it's worth getting. But it's just very short-lived and short-winded.